ability to even speak. Father, today in the name of Jesus Christ, let me not be seen, but you, Abba, Father, be magnified in this house. Father, use me to show forth your glory today. Father, use me to declare your word. Father, let the unction of the Holy Spirit be upon me today to speak. Spirit of the living God, speak through me to your children today. That every one of them today will have one thing or the other that they took home with them about Father. Thank you for lightening our path today. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. Are you there? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to read a little. It said, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wound, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seek after. My sermon today is to encourage you encourage me also they've called us an outcast they've called us zion that no man go to they've called us names that are not of god but the supreme king is still on the throne we will see whose answer will come to pass in our life praise the lord let me go to the previous verse he said this is what the lord is going to do Verse, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. But let me go to verse 16. He said, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thy adversary, every one of them that shall go into captivity, I mean, every one of them will go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be spoiled. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. They've called you an outcast. They've called you that Zion that no man visits anymore. They've concluded that you are completely destroyed. But this is what the Lord God said. Those ones that are calling you an outcast, they've called you name. He said, every one of them, I will devour them. Those that have taken you for a prey and said, okay, no one is coming to protect them. They will go into captivity for your sake. Everyone that have contended with you, according to Isaiah chapter 49, I will contend with them. But guess what? You have to go through this path. One has to go through this path. Let us go to Psalm 125 from verse 3 to 5. He said, the scepter of the wicked would not rest upon the lot of the righteous. The scepter of the wicked, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, that the righteous will not put his or her hands in sin. But guess what? Let us stress, the scepter of the wicked will not rest. Rest means it is permanent upon that place. It's a position that it will stay. Rest means this is your assigned space to rest and devour this person. But God is saying to you in Psalm 125, verse 3 to 5, telling you the scepter of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. It doesn't mean the wicked will not pass your path. It means the wicked will pass, but they will not tarry. Amen. So brethren, you that is saying, oh, this cup is too much for me to carry. Your father is saying, carry it. I'm right there with you. I'll lead you through that path. I'll take you through the valley of the shadow of death. Come, hold on to my hand. You that is saying, who have I committed sin against? Give me the opportunity to ask for forgiveness so that I have redemption. Your father is saying, it is okay. Come, come. I am the one that is leading you through this path. Come. Come. Do not tarry in that position. Keep coming. Don't worry about it. Jesus had to drink the cup of destruction for him to sit upon the throne forever as priest, as a royal priest, forever over you. Amen. 
you will have to go through it. Because through all of this, the adversary is using this opportunity to strengthen you. But the adversary think they are doing a job and they are laughing. Yes, they've called you outcast. They are laughing. They think you, Zion, no one visits anymore. They are laughing. They're sitting down and they're comfortable. But the one that is leading you is saying, come. Don't even look at them. I'm going to be the one to lead you through that valley. I'm even in that valley with you. When it is hot, I'm right there with you. Remember Daniel. When Daniel was tossed into the den of lions, who was the third person in that place that shut the lion's den, shut the lion's mouth? Jesus was right there with Daniel. So Jesus is saying, I'm right there with you. Do not get carried away. Do not be worried. This adversary is meant to shake you and bring you into a position that I can be able to use you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll use my apostle as an example. Believe me, brethren, there is no man of God that you see that carries the anointing, that has not gone through one thing or the other that makes them equipped to carry the anointing. Imagine I ask my little daughter, Megan, I'll turn off the gas stove at home, and I'll ask Megan, please keep an eye on the stove while I run to the bathroom. It means I am not careful. Your father is not going to place the ability in you for you to deliver, for you to be free if you have not been delivered. You will not have the passion to do it. The passion will not be there. You've not gone through illness that make you strong. And then you're delivered and you're healed. And then others are coming your way to seek your hands of righteousness. You won't even feel this enthusiasm to help them because you feel like, oh, what's the big deal? I'm, you know, I've never experienced it, so you will not feel it. If you've not been through homelessness, you will not understand when others are walking around without nothing to eat, no food to eat. There are people out there who have not been through stress and they'll see a man begging and tell him, oh, get out of here and go and get a job. You pray you're not going to go through that. But it only takes you going through that road for you to have sympathy and treat them with respect. Because God is telling you, I'm going to use even the things that you thought are not important. I'm going to use them to confine you. That's exactly the power of God. He will take a slave from the bottom, clean him up, and make him to see to the prince of his town. So brethren, Whatever the adversity you are going through, whatever the pain you are going through, there is always a light at the end of that tunnel. Amen. It is only a night time. It is only at night. But at the end, joy will come in the morning. Amen. But brethren, I want us to go to Job chapter 35 verse 10. Let us go to Job chapter 35 verse 10. I'm going to try to cut down so much because I had so much to say, but we, our time is limited in this place. Praise the Lord. Job chapter 35. I'll start from verse 8. You that is crying in the night, you that is being tormented in the night, the weight is just too much on your shoulder. And you wonder, when am I going to have peace? When am I going to have rest? But this God is saying, don't tarry too much on what you are going through because I'm going to be the one to lead you through. Let, me, let us open to Job chapter 35 from verse 8 to 11. He said, thy wickedness, this was Job speaking. He said, thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thy righteousness also may profit the son of man. He said, by reason of the multitude of the oppression, they make, he oppressed, I mean, the oppressed cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty that is upon them. They will cry out because of the hand of the mighty that is upon them. But 10 says, in this process, we forget to cry and say, where is my maker? The one that gives me songs. 
in the night. Why am I pointing this verse to you? I've been through it. I know what it feels like. That after a battle in a night time, and the God of wonder will bring songs of heaven into you and you begin to sing songs Amen. in your dream. Amen. And you will see the victory vivid in your eyes. That how did this happen? And then songs begins to blare in heaven. And angels are lifting God up. <coughs> Brethren, it is necessary. Don't be moved by all of this weight. They are a way of being able to fashion you to know what you are carrying. Because sometimes, some of this anointing, some of the gift of God, they are not for children to play with. Amen. Someone called some Christian a cockroach Christian. Do you know the reason? These are the ones that are still playing on the peripheral. They are the ones that are still thinking, oh, it's all calm and dandy. But the day the storm comes, they are not prepared to hold or manage this storm. Adversity is like a knife. It's like a knife. Depending on who decides you are positioned. If you are positioned in the handle part, then you can manage this knife. But if you are positioned in the, on the edge of the knife, it will definitely cut you. I would prefer to be on the section where I'm holding the handle and directing this knife so that this knife will not end up cutting me. But brethren, some of us are still feeling comfortable. Last year, before the apostles stood on the pulpit to speak about what we should expect for the next year, a word came into my ear. This word was not like every other word. It came and says, prayer, prayer. That was it. For a word like that to come, it came, the Lord God used my apostles to speak the word into my ear in the night. Prayer, prayer. It means the enemy is ratcheting up the adversity against every single Christian. And now, we must increase our ability to pray more. Amen. It's not going to be the kind of prayer that you pray anymore when you're on your way rushing out to get to work. No. This will mean taking time out at night to seek God. Because in Amos chapter 5, God told them, if you want to live, seek me. That's what he told Israel. That Israel, if you plan to live, seek me or else you will die. We do not want to die, brethren. Mm. We must seek this Lord that he will put his life in us for us to survive. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us open to Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. There's a reason why there's a refiner's fire. Numbers 14, 28. Are you there? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Numbers 14, verse 28. It says, Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ear, so will I do unto you. As you have spoken in my ear. So it means you better start speaking now before it becomes too late. You better start speaking now when you feel like the storm is calm, before the storm comes. Because as you speak in the Lord's ear, so will he do. But you know, some of us are speaking negative when we are even in this adversary. Some of us are saying, whoa, whoa, whoa unto me. Why me? Why not you? Why not you? That when you're not hungry, you will not seek after food. When you're not unemployed, when you're employed, there is no need for you to feel like, oh, I don't have a dollar in my pocket. 
But when you wake up and notice that the enemy is putting fire on you, that's when you know that you're going to seek the Lord's face. But some of us, we are so comfortable on the couch and we believe that nothing is going to hurt you or I. But he said the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. What it means that I will not allow the enemy to overthrow you. But the enemy is going to pass through this line. So you better stand and hold on that this battle will not consume you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let us go to 1 Peter chapter 17. I mean 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7. There's a verse I'm trying to get to. But I'm wondering why am I going through this short, short part. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7. I read. He said that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, through it being tried with this fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think that was what I was trying to point out. But in essence, is saying there must be a fire that must try you. And this fire will purify you. It will not purify you to be like gold that will perish. But it will purify you unto the honor that is in Christ Jesus. So the kind of fire that we need is the purifying fire that is located in Malachi chapter 3 verse 3. It said this refiner's fire is going to burn so hot. That everything in you that needs to be shaken must be removed. That the things that is left, do, I mean, have you seen God being purified? When a God is being purified, you see the dross now comes to the top. And you scoop the dross away. And the only one that you see that is on the bottom is the real gold. But the Lord God is saying, I'm going to use this refiner's fire to refine you. That you will be like a gold, but gold perishes. But this fire will refine you that anything in you that is not of God will be removed. That the things that will be left will be the only thing that cannot be shaken. And the things that cannot be shaken is the spirit of faith in you. Brethren, it only takes you vividly seeing a revelation of God destroying your enemies before you that you can definitely stand and say, you enemy... I have overcome you already. You are not even a fight for me to worry about. Amen. I'm not afraid of the enemy because I have seen giants stand in front of me and they are leveled before my face. The so the faith that I have is not for me to be afraid when I see witchcraft standing around me. But if I have not seen it vividly being destroyed, I'll still be quaking. And I'll be praying prayers that looks like, okay, I'm afraid. But because I've seen the power of God destroying my enemies in front of me, I'm not afraid. They will come like a flood. Brethren, you have to take the word of God literally for what it says. The word of God is real. It is strong. It is true. He that promised is faithful to bring his word to pass. And he's watching his word to come to pass in your life. So brethren, don't be carried away with all that you see. Let us go to Hosea chapter 2 verse 14 to 23. I'll cut off from the other parts. Hosea chapter 2 verse 14 to 23. I know most of us know this story about Hosea chapter 2 verse 14 to 23. But I just want to deal on it again. Thank you, Evangelist uh, Siano spoke about this last week. I mean, on Friday. But I just want to go back. Hosea chapter 2, verse 14 to 23. Are you there? Thank you. It said, therefore, behold, 
I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness. Brethren, your fancy job, your fancy car, your fancy everything around you. In that process, the Lord is not going to be able to speak to you. You know why? Because those who take your distraction, they will take your ways, they will take everything, they will take your eyes away from God. But God is saying, in Hosea chapter 2 verse 14, He said, I will allure her. This time I will pull her into me. And I will lead her to the wilderness. And there I will speak comfortably in his ear. I will speak comfortably in your ear. This time you won't feel worried about those things anymore. Because all that you thought were so important have been destroyed from you. Now you are attentive. You are in the wilderness. You are hungry. You are thirsty. So your ears will be attentive to the drop of sustenance coming from your Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. Then 15. He said, I, I will give her back her vineyard from thence and the valley of Acor for a door of hope. Let me dwell on the valley of Acor for the door of hope. In Joshua chapter 5, from verse 5, I mean Joshua chapter 5, 6 and 7, God, the prince, the king, I mean the, 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 the captain of the Lord's host, came to Joshua and explained to Joshua, I have given Jericho over to you. Follow my lead. Everything that I ask you to do, do it. But he said, do not take anything out of Jericho that I have not given to you because all of those things in there are cursed. And he spoke specifically to Joshua. And Joshua went back into the camp of Israel and told them, this was what the Lord God said. And some in there greed. Things that are not important. Children like Lot's wife. The opportunity that you have in the world has a way of pulling you. And then God is not able to speak to you. He has to pull you into the wilderness for him to get your attention. So God told them, look, I've given Jericho to you. Do not touch anything in that land. And Achan, out of his greed, took one of the spoils, took it home, the silver, and buried it in his camp. And then the children of Israel went out to war, and God took his hands away from the children of Israel, and they were defeated in this war. The Lord opened his eyes and said, you sinned against me. The glory of the Lord God physically left the camp of Israel. The Lord told Joshua, someone has sinned in your camp, find them out. And God pointed him out to the family of Achan. And Achan confessed. But it took Joshua destroying Achan for the glory of the living God to come back into the camp of Israel. That now the door of the beauty of the Lord God came back into Israel and Israel now had the Lord God. So God is using this one as a reference, saying that I will give her her vineyard and hands and the valley of Echo for a door of hope. A door of hope. You see Jesus in similarity here. Through one man, sin was accredited to every one of us. Through one man, disobedient. But through one man's obedience in the name Jesus Christ, righteousness was brought back into our life. So the valley of the, uh, the valley of Achan is in a way related to the way Jesus came into this earth. So brethren, Jesus, God is saying, I have to take you into the wilderness for me to have your attention and be able to give you all the things that I have for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then he said, he said, and it shall be at that day, said the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi. How are you going to call someone? I'm married to my wife. I love her so much. But there is a way I will behave that will make her think, oh, you're my master. You're not my wife. But God is saying, I'm going, you're, I'm going to make you call me Ishi, your husband. You're not going to call me Bali anymore, your master. But you're going to call me Ishi, 
your husband because I'll give you back your vineyard. I'll give you back all that you've lost. I'll give you back everything that matters to you. But I have to take you where? Into the wilderness first to show you, to make you understand that I am your sustenance. I am the one that will give you life. I am the one that will give you ability to stand. There is no way you can come into my presence without me bidding you to come in. So brethren, we must come to a realization that look, without God, we must declare this word on a daily basis. Without God, we are nothing. Without Him, we are dead. Because guess what? Now that you are in the position of the Lord God, you see, I speak to my apostle quite often. My apostle will say, I have to keep my hands clean. I have to keep my life clean. Because the fact that the Lord God uses me as an instrument to destroy the yokes of darkness. Imagine I stain these hands with dirt. Do you know the amount of demons that will feel, oh my goodness, I've got him now. They will come with all the torment that they have to pour upon him. Now imagine a child that has not gone through adversaries to clear away pride, to clear away things that doesn't matter, to remove things that makes you feel like you're more than enough. You, you're bigger than the next person. You're not humble. You don't have love in you. The fruit of the Spirit is not in you. You will not handle all of this anointing with care, with the fear of God. And then the spirit of faith will not be in you because you will speak a thing and you will not even see it come to pass because the spirit of faith is not in you. It is God that gives you the spirit of faith. God gave you the spirit of faith. You don't have it. He gave it to you because of what he has shown you with your eyes wide open. That now you believe, ah, I don't care what others are saying. It is what he says over my life that will come to pass. Praise the Lord. So like he said, adversity has a way. Embrace it. Don't say, oh, why me? Jesus had to drink the cup of suffering. He was so sorrowful. And then he went to his father and said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass me by. That's how painful it was. Jesus, your father that you are crying to on a daily basis, went through the torment that the glory of the living God will be revealed through him. Why aren't you going to go through it? That the glory of the living God will be revealed through you. Today, Jesus is Lord of Lord, the captain of the Lord's host. Jesus is seated upon the throne forever, making intercession for you and I. He just was not transitioned into that position because he's the son of God. The father took him through. The father took him through. The, the son was sweating blood on the day of his destruction. And at the end of the day, the glory of the father was revealed through him. So brethren, hug your adversity. Hug your pain. Hug whatever you are going through. The one that is leading you through this valley of the shadow of death is mightier than that issue that you're going through. But he's using those adversity to break you down to the barest minimum. That now, when you lay down on the floor to worship him, you can't even look up to, to his eyes. All you just want to do is to just be at his feet and magnify him because you know, ah, without that person, without that God be, be, be in front of you, you are dead. Praise the Lord. So our joy in this house, embrace what you're going through today and seek the Lord's face on a consistent basis that he will be the one to now bring you out. And then the reason why he's taking you through this process is for his glory to be revealed in you. That now when people see you, they will praise God for your life. Praise the Lord. So our joy, I thank you for listening. But look, my brethren, do not get all worked up about what the world is seeking. Don't follow the world to where they are going. He said the wild road leads to where? To damnation. But you know what the crooked road looks like? The narrow road, it is like tight and slim. And you're going to have to squeeze through like this. 
All of the loads that you think you're carrying, they can't go through that narrow road with you. It is only the wide road that it will go through, and those loads will not take you to the destination that God has destined for you. Praise the Lord. So in conclusion, my brethren, seek your father so that you will live. Do not keep your eyes on the adversity that you are going through. The Lord God is mighty to bring you through and he will take you to that promised land in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you. I spoke in your word to your children. Thank you for encouraging your children. Thank you for encouraging me. For I know the end lies in your hand. For I know the number of my days are, are in your hand. I thank you, Abba Father, that you will will it whichever way you choose, Abba Father, yes. that we will do your good will here on earth in Jesus' victorious name. Father, we thank you. Be thou glorified on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.